go into, and that's the falsification of our history. And I'd like for you to kind of explain to us, you know, um, how that history that the European wrote is then written out of the Bible that they wrote. And so the places like Mesopotamia and Ur and Sumer and uh, the Hicksholtz and all of these then are justified on that book, the Bible. Can, and then I want to begin to deconstruct all of that. So can you begin uh, to make that connection so that we will establish Bible literature, which you have already told us is a 19th century, uh, 18th century creation that is somebody else's story. And then they take the Bible and write history with it. So could you kind of explain how they, how they did that, how, they, how that's done, and then let's deconstruct these, uh, this, the different places and events that they are strived in to the history of Africa, uh, ancient Egypt. Well, like I said before, Clemson is this. The Old Testament came out of the religion called Judaism. Judaism is not a BC religion. It's the last of the three major Western religions to come into existence. Okay, you got Christianity, Mohammedism slash Islam, and then Judaism third. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so that religion came about in the late 11th and early 12th century, created by one Rashi, Solomon Bar Isaac called Rashi. I said that the, you cannot advance Judaism past Rashi. Correct. Nor can you advance Judaism past the First Crusade, 1096. You have to understand that, that the Bible, the Old Testament, came out of the creation of the religion called Judaism. Mm -hmm. One has to understand that the, that, the old, that the New Testament creation came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we're talking about in... Uh, the, the 16th century, by way of Desiderius Erasmus, the homosexual, who wrote the Novum Instrumentum, or the, the three synoptic gospels. So you have to understand that. And then, as the years progressed, okay, they began to add and embellish both books. I said that both books, the Old and New Testament, was put up under one cover by one Jacob Van Lysfeld in 1527. Second person to do it was uh, Martin Luther, 1535. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you got to go back into the Renaissance era that I mentioned uh, prior in this, uh, this 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 viewing here. Mm -hmm. That during the Renaissance era was a time when uh, the age of new learning came to Europe because the masses of Europeans were illiterate, couldn't read or write. And at that time, uh, a school system was set up, was beginning to be set up for the purpose of teaching the Europeans to read and write. Mm -hmm. So they called it the Renaissance era. Mm -hmm. And they created schools for that. In the school system that was created during this time, they set in place, as part of their curriculum, history as a subject. Mm -hmm. Okay? And once they set history in as a subject, they used this subject called history as a, as a foundation, history for the whole entire world, with themselves controlling history. Whoever writes history controls history. So the Chinese and other people didn't write They didn't write a history themselves. They had no, they had, they had no interest in, in doing so. They, in, in, in fact, they had no alphabet to write with. Only the ancient Egyptians had an alphabet. They had three forms of writing. I mentioned that prior. Mm -hmm. So now here you have a school system set up and in that school system a curriculum was created. In the curriculum history as a subject was created by the Europeans who used the Bible that was in creation at that time as the foundation for world history. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. That's how the Bible got into the curriculum to, of the school system to be used as the foundation for world history. And in so doing, they control the writing of that history, or of history. And they wrote us out of history, dehumanized us, and wrote us out of history, detached us 
away from our ancient Egyptian ancestors. Like I said before, in order for us to find our greatness or claim our greatness, we have to find our way back to ancient Egypt and claim that. No place in the continent of Africa other than ancient Egypt will give us back our greatness. No place. I don't care what country you name in Africa. We cannot give you back our greatness. Only ancient Egypt. Not Egyptian. Don't be confused. I am an ancient Egyptian. I'm a descendant of the ancient Egyptians. They are my ancestors. I'm not an Egyptian because anybody of any race, creed, or color can be called and identified as an ancient, as an, as an Egyptian. Okay? A European can be an Egyptian. Chinese can be an Egyptian. An Indian of India can be an Egyptian. A Mexican. Anybody of any race, creed, or color can be an Egyptian. But the only someone that can be or claim to be a descendant of the ancient Egyptian, and you have to be African to do that. If you're not an African, you can't claim ancient Egypt. See, so don't ever call yourself, you are a descendant, Clemson Brown, descendant of the ancient Egyptian. Don't call yourself an Egyptian. Because this white man said, well, hey, I'm an Egyptian too. And he's right. But he cannot claim ancient Egypt because he's not an African. See, so by him controlling the subject called history. He can write it any way that he see fit to write it, but he used the Bible as the foundation for world history. And what I do with the Bible is discard the Bible to the nearest garbage can because it is historically worthless. Now let's begin to look at that history that he created and see if we can deconstruct it. Um, if we go back um, to uh, he moved civilization, the beginnings of civilization, into the area of the Mesopotamian. He talks about uh, Ur and Summer and uh, the Indus Valley alone uh, as being contemporaries with uh, Egypt. Um, how do how do we look at that? Is there is that accurate or inaccurate? Uh, so far as Summer or the Sumerians, that's inaccurate. So far as Mesopotamia, that's strictly biblical literature or based on biblical literature. Uh, that's in the, in the Bible. You only find Mesopotamia inside the Bible. The only place that you find the Sumerians is in the Bible under two names, uh, Akkad and Shinar. Mm -hmm. That's where you find the reference of Sumerian in the Bible, okay, under those two names. So therefore, there's never been a uh, summer or Sumerians, okay? That is strictly biblical literature. There's never been a Mesopotamia whom they are saying that uh, Mesopotamia uh, is where Iraq is today. Historically incorrect. That's all Bible. You can't use anything in the Bible to sustain the stories that's written in the Bible. You can't use the Bible to sustain any history, okay? Then let's get back to the Sumerians. In as late as 1915, the European community denied the existence of a Sumerian ever existing in world history. Let me bring uh, one of those scholars, those European scholars in, uh, by name. That was Joseph Halevi. Okay? Joseph Halevi was a French... Uh, uh, historian coming out of France. He denied and fought against the existence of a, Samar a Sumerian ever existing. So, so, so you have that polemic of denouncing the Sumerian